Chair. I am Councilmember Adi Nick Miller, and I am the Chair of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor. I'd like to thank uh, my colleagues that are here with us today, the Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, Council Members Adams, as well as Council Members Farrell. Before we begin the oversight portion of today's hearing, I was, I was going to say something really witty about Charlie's Angels sitting over here. And, and, and is this how great I feel seeing, being amongst all this greatness here this morning and beauty and greatness. So um, that being said, we're going to get right back to work. Before we begin the oversight portion of the hearing, the Committee on Civil Service and Labor will hear three bills which will provide health insurance coverage to certain deceased employees of the city of New York. The bills introduced by myself at the request of the mayor include intros 1785, 1786, and 1810. We will also be voting on intros 1786 and 1810, as well as intro 1604B, which expands the collection of workers' compensation data, and reso number 40, which calls for the employees of, employees of the city of New York, employees' retirement system, to allow city employees to receive disability benefits when workers' compensation, when city, when state and federal agencies, workers' compensation and social security disability have been determined as employees dis is dis disabled. First intro 1785, 1786, and 1810, sponsored by myself and introduced by request of the mayor, relate to providing health, health insurance coverage to surviving family members of certain deceased employees of the City of New York. Intro 1785 would extend these health insurance benefits to surviving families, members of all deceased city members who die in the service of the city, including those who die from illnesses related to 9-11. Intro 1786 would extend these benefits to surviving families of Matthew Jakubowski. Somebody should have, someone should have prepped me on that one and uh, forgive me if we butchered it. A former worker of the Department of Sanitation who was killed on the job on 17, September 24th of 2019. And intro 1810, the family of Eduardo Cale Abril a worker with the Department of Transportation was killed while performing his duties on October 22nd of 19. Second intro 1604B, sponsored by myself, increases the collection of data related to workers' compensation claims in 2004 when the city passed the law enabling the report. It, intend, it, it intended for it to be comprehensive and provide information that will promote and develop a target program to identify and eliminate hazardous workplace conditions. While the current law requires gathering information of physical injuries sustained by municipal employees during the course of duty, this bill will require that the law also collects information on occupational disease, which are considered conditions of disabilities that develop over time in the course of duties. Intro 1604B, is important because it will get us more data on how city employees are getting hurt and getting sick on the job, help identify patterns of injuries and illnesses within specific job titles, and potentially bring about workplace ergonomics improvements through the city's creative programs and initiatives that can help re re reduce occupational injuries and illnesses so that we can keep our workers safe and healthy. Finally, Reso number 40, sponsored by Council Member Robert Cornegy, calls on NICER to determine that members qualify for disability pension if the state and federal agencies have determined that, persons are dis that these persons are disabled. Currently, a municipal employee can qualify st for state and federal disabilities, which are workers' compensation and disability, so Social Security disability, but be denied the same disability retirement benefit on the city level by NICES. It is important that city employees who qualify for disabilities pension benefits on the state and federal levels can also get those same benefits from New York City. Today we vote on intros 1786, 1810, 1604B, 
and Reso 40. It is vital that we hear and pass these bills in order to ensure that family members of those who have died as a result of working and serving our city continue to receive the health insurance benefits that they so greatly deserve. All this information is necessary to keep our city employees safe and healthy while at work. I urge my colleagues to vote yes and on all proposed legislations being heard today. I will. Okay, I have, I have remarks from uh, Council Member uh, Cornegy, who is unfortunately uh, unable to attend today. Resolution 40, due to the falling buildings debris resulting in and pedestrian fat fatally in Manhattan, he has, uh, he has asked me to read his statement on behalf of Resol 40. Calls for a change in the burdens of people bear and assessing disability pensions versus the burden New York City employees retirement system nicer bears. It calls for NICER to take on a board concurrent findings for disability benefits of New York State Workers Compensation Board and United States Social Security Administration. When Workers Comp and SSA have both found an injured worker eligible for benefits, NICERs need to act not that needs to, to, to not make a determination that foregoes um, the preceding determinations. Paperwork and delays to access their ac accidental benefits and pensions. This resolution relies on a basic finding from social, social science. The choices of government makes it makes and designing systems has real world consequences for people who have a navigate who have to navigate the system. This resolution says that the design of this system should change to, to reflect that, that fact. In Workers' Compensation and Social Security Administration, we already have two examining bodies of injured workers' circumstances. NICERS should take those findings and create an altogether less burdensome, easier to navigate, and more common sense system. I thank my colleagues for voting in favor of this resolution and voting in favor of our efforts to make that more common sense system a reality here in the city of New York. Thank you. That is from Council Member Robert Cornegy. And now we are going to hear from, from the admin, Sharif Solomon and Steve Banks. You, you want to? Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions? I do. I do. Uh, thank you, Chair Miller, members of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, and members of the Committee on Women and Gender Equity for convening this hearing. <clears throat> My name is Stephen Banks, and I serve as the first Deputy Commissioner and General Counsel at the New York City Office of Labor Relations. And I'm honored to discuss the mayor's proposals that Councilman Miller described to expand health insurance benefits to both the survivors of all city employees who participated in rescue, recovery, and cleanup operations uh, on and after the days following 9-11, <laughs> and for the survivors of all city employees who die from the natural and proximate result of an accident or injury sustained while in the performance of duty. Uh, joining me is Sharif Solomon from the mayor's office to assist with any questions that the council members may have. Uh, although the events of 9-11 occurred over 18 years ago, the effects of that day continue to impact all New Yorkers and their families, including city employees who took part in the rescue, recovery, and cleanup efforts in connection with the WTC attacks. While uh, city residents still remember the tragedy of that day, they also remember the service of their fellow New Yorkers who responded when called, rescued those in need, and participated in those recovery and cleanup efforts thereafter. Uh, during those days of shock and horror, these employees served as a beacon of hope, uh, for hope and normalcy. It is our duty and our honor to assist these everyday heroes and their families as they deal with the ongoing and continuing impact of that day's events. As we know, those who res responded to Ground Zero also unknowingly were exposed to toxic dust in the area following the tower's collapse. 
Heartbreakingly, this to toxic dust has caused many responders to contract respiratory and other illnesses. Many have suffered for years, and some have passed away. Equally, those who responded to the Fresh Kills landfill, the morgue, or the temporary morgue, and other locations have also contracted illnesses that have cut their careers short and tragically ended lives too soon. While nothing can make up for that tragic loss of life experienced by these employees' families, as a city, we can and must support them as they deal with the fallout of the loss of their loved ones. In the years since 9-11, the state legislature, the city council, and various mayoral administrations have demonstrated their commitment to these employees who served and their families through the enactment of various policies and legislation. The city has expanded the health and leave benefits for active employees, and the state legislature has enacted accidental disability benefits paid through retirement and accidental death benefits provided to survivors in the event of a city employee's death. With respect to those pension benefits, the state WTC presumption law, which was, en was enacted in 2005 and amended thereafter to ex expand benefits, establishes a presumption that certain enumerated illnesses in the New York State Retirement and Social Security law were contracted as the result of an employee's participation in World Trade Center rescue, recovery, and cleanup operations. Those persons deemed to have participated according to the eligibility criteria in the law may qualify for accidental death disability benefits, and in the event of their death, their survivors may qualify for an accidental death benefit. Among the health and leave benefits the city provides to its employees is World Trade Center excused leave policy, which applies to employees who seek an initial evaluation with a WTC health program at one of its centers of excellence, including three NYC health and hospitals programs. Additionally, this year, the city introduced an unlimited sick leave policy for civilian employees suffering from 9-11 related illnesses who need time away from work. City employees are also entitled to annual leave, sick leave, and line of duty injury leave, any of which can and are used for 9-11 related injuries or illnesses. Together, our city has worked to honor the commitment of those who answered the call to duty on 9-11 and its aftermath, but we also recognize that more needs to be done. It's for this reason that Mayor de Blasio and the Council have collaborated on the proposals before you today. Intro 1785 would provide health insurance benefits for the survivors of all city employees who have died from 9-11 related illnesses resulting from their participation in rescue, recovery, and cleanup operations. The bill also provides survivor health benefits to the survivors of all city employees who die from on-the-job injuries. By providing health benefits to the survivors of employees who have died due to 9-11 related or other service related injuries, this bill seeks to erase gaps in existing law which provide survivor health benefits to the families of police officers, firefighters, and emergency medical technicians who die from a service related injury during active service or retirement, but not other city employees. In our view, this benefit should be the standard for all city employees and not just the subset. Uh, unlike police officers, firefighters, and EMTs, the survivors of uniformed correction officers and sanitation workers re receive survivor health benefits only if their family member dies while in active service, but are ineligible if the family member dies from a 9-11 related injury or illness after they retire. The harsh reality of 9-11 illnesses, as we've learned, is that they can manifest themselves after retirement or could become more pronounced during retirement for those retiring on an accidental disability, leading to more line of duty deaths occurring long after an employee has separated from service. Intro 1785 would eliminate the question of when the 9-11 related death occurred in order to be consistent with other titles under the law. The families of civilian employees who die as a result of service related injuries, whether 9-11 related or for injuries sustained as the natural and proximate result of an accident sustained while in the performance of duty, Current, re currently receive no such survivor benefit under, exist under existing law. <clears throat> in the case of that latter group, these gaps have led to several instances in which the council and the mayor have passed bills to address these individual families' circumstances. Rather than amend the law each time a tragedy occurs, we believe it is appropriate to take definitive and comprehensive measures now that ensure that in the future such families receive the assistance commensurate with that received by other city employees. 
Uh, today, the committee is also considering intros 1786 and 1810, which have also been introduced at the request of the mayor. These bills would authorize the city to provide health insurance benefits to the survivors of two specific employees who were recently killed in the line of duty, one from the Department of Sanitation and one from the Department of Transportation. Thank you again for holding a hearing on this very important topic, which has sadly impacted too many of New York City employees' families. We look forward to working with the council to move forward with this very important legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have anything to add, Mr. Sound? No, sir, I think Steve said it all. Thank you, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that the administration is, is working with council and organized labor to make sure that the families who have, who have uh, of members who have sacrificed so much um, are made whole. And we say all the time that the greatness of our city is, is um, the service of its municipal workforce. And we want to make sure that we are compensating and demonstrating that value, not just um, in life, but um, unfortunately um, in, in times when they are forced to uh, having sac made that ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. So I want to thank you for your testimony. And, um, and uh, I look forward to uh, further testimony and uh, so that we can vote this out so that the families could have the, um, the, 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 the quality of life that they deserve. Thank you. Yep. And um, so we're going to call up our next panel. Joe Paleo. From... President of Local 983, D.C. 37. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Is this on? Okay. Thank you, Chair Miller. Thank you, City Council, for having us here. Um, unfortunately, these are probably one of the worst things I can do as president. Two of our members are impacted by this. We have two deceased members. One is the uh, Department of Transportation worker, Eduardo Cali Abril. He was tragically died, you know, while working. And two is Linda Mercer. Linda Mercer was a traffic agent, level four. You may have known her personally. Um, she tragically died as a result of 9-11 uh, injuries. Right? And it wasn't easy for Linda. Linda advocated, not just for her, but all people that worked at 9-11 that uh, were suffering from whatever diseases came, came as a result of um, those, um, those days. Uh, Linda would go to work sick. She would go you know, with a bag that she would puke in, to give you an example, um, till we finally got her to have her sick time restored. And uh, she was a fighter. And uh, as a result, now all city workers have, uh, have, have this unlimited sick. And it's just a tragedy that we, we have to go through this, that we have two set of employees, ones that get it, and ones that we have to fight for and be here. And um, these legislations aren't going to cure it all, but would make life a lot better, at least for the families of these people who gave their lives for the city of New York. Thank you. Thank you. You have something you want to add? Well, I want to thank you so much, uh, President, Mr. President, for, for coming in and really articulating not just the, the service of your members, but the plight uh, that they have had um, after um, contracting these illnesses uh, from 9-11 and, and having to suffer the indignities of, of having to utilize your own sick time and not being recognized in the same way who made the same sacrifice. And so it's very important. And as we move forward, um, it is our hopes um, that we pass legislation that all employees are recognized in the same way. But more importantly, that what we do today to individualize and memorialize these individuals who have made the ultimate sacrifice that we don't have to do this each and every time mm -hmm. someone lose their lives, come in 
so that the family can have benefits. It should be automatic, right? It is, is common sense um, that that happens. And so we, we, we definitely um, are working toward that and, and your statement and the sacrifices of your members uh, should not be in, main, in vain. So thank you so much for, for your time. I appreciate all of your help. Again, thank you so much. You're welcome, thank you. Can we, yep, we have quorum. Can we uh, call the roll? Lee Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on civil service and labor. Introduction 1604B, 1786. 1810 and resolution 40A. All items are coupled. Chair Miller. I vote aye. Adams. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Ulrich. We vote a four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted by the committee. We're going to hold it open for Councilmember Rosenthal. Aye. Vote is now five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. The roll is being held open for five minutes, now four and counting. <laughs> 